بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم سلام and welcome to a special session for Eid today we want to talk about how to integrate the gifts we received from God in the month of Ramadan when I say gifts I'm talking about everything whatever good happened to us in the month of Ramadan how can we um, integrate it into our life such that now we don't feel like okay the month finished and we're back to normal life and perhaps maybe one thing that it could really help us with with this task is to um, actually take a look back at the at this holy month the way it went and try to see what were some of our highlights in in any experience after any experience they say that for example it gave you some sort of insight it gave you some sort of uh, i don't know a new way of looking at life they say if you want to keep this going forward it's very important that after it's over you don't just rush back to normal life you spend some time looking back at it reflecting at it seeing what forms of insight comes to your mind comes to your heart how can you make decisions that ensures going forward that experience is you know uh, is not lost so in order to do that maybe now for all of us and for those who are watching later on youtube as well it's a nice idea to think a little bit about what were some of the spiritual highlights for you in in this holy month of ramadan and when i say spiritual highlights it doesn't necessarily have to be something that happened you know in the mosque or on the prayer mat it could be maybe for example you went to the center saw your friends and that was nice that i consider it a spiritual highlight of the month as well that sense of sisterhood brotherhood i'm looking for a word that encapsulates both brotherhood and sisterhood i don't know what that would be siblinghood that form of community that form of closeness maybe for someone that was the highlight maybe for another person the highlight was the discipline they had that oh wow look at me i i struggled before the holy month to stay away from food for more than two three hours i'm always snacking but now in this month for 14 hours 15 hours i don't know depending on where we live i managed to stay away from food that is that is very interesting for me that i could do that i have that willpower within me when i'm in the right context and getting the right support for someone that could be their highlight um, for another person the highlight could be the fact that not any specific thing in the holy month but the whole atmosphere it seems like everyone is a little bit different in in the month people are more focused on on what is the meaning of being an insan or relationship with another world or you know aspects of our life which may be a little bit uh, become forgotten or neglected during life before ramazan before ramazan life is all about uh, work 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 money stress work politics and to let that stress out a little bit of football netflix or a little bit of this and that any i have a feeling that for many of us life before the shah ramazan it's so much routine of you know do this for the children do that at work finish this finish this <gasps> i'm so tired let's go on a trip or i'm so tired let's watch a football get some energy again tomorrow the same thing so there's that element of rushedness that element of what the hell is going on why are we doing all of this who am i what am i here for um, i'm getting 40 i'm getting 50 i'm getting 60 what is going on but in the month of ramazan it seems like while all of those are there some other things become important too it seems like the priorities change ah oh, oh, i'm an insane i'm not this machine chasing money the whole time or i'm not this machine just going through pain and life and all of that there's other things to me there's a god i can talk to there's a community that i can be around who loves me who doesn't want anything out of me there are people ready to serve me very interesting one of the things for example in the shabab uh, shabab septain 
programs uh, I mentioned to people and also the Shabab themselves also were telling people was that we're here to serve you. We're here, we don't want anything from you. And if you think about it, so many people voluntarily were working, these youth, bless them, 24-7 uh, sometimes. I mean, some of them I know, myself, they would maybe sleep one hour, two hours a day during those nights of Qadr. And you ask them why. It says, we just want to create a good experience for people. So in the month of Ramadan, you see that, oh my God, I am someone that all these beautiful souls are working so hard just to serve me. Wow, that's very interesting. That does not usually happen in life. No one serves me or if they serve me, afterwards they come with a receipt and they're like, are you paying with cash or with card? With card, okay, can you top up it? Can you top it here for me, please? <laughs> you know, so it 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 reminds us that we're more than than life before Shah Ramazan sometimes tries to deceive us into thinking we're this tiny thing looking for happiness in movies or or trips or or work or bigger house and all of that were nice. So I'm not really I'm not really um, attacking movies or anything. I love movies. I love trips. All of that. Big houses. Everything. But that's not really who we are. Ramazan shows I. With a dog, Abu Hamza Somali can be the happiest person in the world. I, with maybe a brother next to me just talking about life, having that post iftar tea, feel so free, feel so elevated, feel so whew, just in a different planet. Allah, I'm trying to mention different experiences so that one of them matches an experience you had. But ultimately, this is for you to look back in Ramazan and see what was there that um, was nice for you because if we want to integrate it going forward we need to first identify them and uh, enjoy them again sometimes looking back really helps you enjoy it one more time so maybe spend a few seconds now really thinking about what were some of the spiritual highlights for you in the month of ramadan Think about it 30 seconds. Don't do something else. Do this for yourself. Just 30 seconds. Think about what were the highlights of this holy month for you. <coughs> oh, yeah. The discussions we had for me were some of the highlights. Seeing people, talking to God. The fact that everyone was ready to talk about God. People were ready to learn. That was so precious. There, there were a lot. There was a lot of highlights, I think. But these are some of the very special ones. The fact that God was more present in our life, I really love that. And maybe this is the one element that I want to talk about going forward. But just before that, I want to mention all of whatever spiritual highlight you found. Don't think that this was only possible for you in the month of Ramadan. These are uh, not Ramadan specific experiences. These are experiences that God showed you what life could look like if you live with God, right? If we as a community or if we individually live with God, these were more tasters. Okay? God in this month wasn't saying, guys, come have fun and then go back to your lives. No, God was saying, guys, come, let me show you what kind of life is possible if we're all together trying to support one another and remember God. Don't you like it now after Ramadan? Go and build this for the whole year. In other words, a mistake a lot of us make is that we think Ramadan is this special month we come to and then we go back to our normal life. Whereas Ramadan is a vision of what life can look like if God and in son are the center. If God and a soul are at the center. Because <clears throat> Unfortunately, for most of the year, it's not God who is in the center. It's not even us. One of the main teachings of Ramazan, I feel like for a lot of people, is that insan, 
even when you want to make yourself priority, remember there are many aspects to you. There's your body, there are these desires that comes with that, and then there's your soul. And when you put your soul at your priority, the body and all the other aspects would be happy, <clears throat> but you get something that is so precious. Apologies. And if you don't address the needs of your soul, no matter what you achieve for your body or for your mind even, something is always missing. Something is always lacking. Yani, when you pay attention fully to the body, the soul remains unsatisfied. But when you pay attention to the soul, even the body feels better. So one of the things a lot of people were saying was that after... 14, 15 hours of fasting, when I had fruits or any type of food, it tasted so much better. And I said, of course, of course it tastes better because we're living in a culture where for most people we have access to everything, all food we want, any dessert we want, just a click of a button, you know, just Uber, bring it home, Uber Eats or other countries, different things. And so we're going towards a, 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 a life in which you can't really even make your body happy if your soul is not in a high place. Why? Because imagine what makes the body happy. Food? Hope. How much food can you have? You have the best food you want every day. I promise you, after a week, you get tired of it. You know, and that's why they're trying to make everything look weird. There are some, one of the examples I give is that they bring a burger which before it was just burger, then they were like, let's put other stuff inside it. Let's just create, you know, new varieties for people because it seems like people are bored of burgers. Before burger was such a cool thing. So now let's put, I don't know, let's put eggs inside it. Let's put hash browns inside it. How about turkey rashers? Let's put a turkey rasher inside and let's make it a little bit longer. Oh, people got bored of that. They're like, you know what? Let's bring uh, what are these things that you use for injections and inject the burger with cheese. Let's put cheese all over it. And all of this shows that when the soul's needs are not met, the soul tries to meet its needs through the body and the body has such a small limit. You give it one meal of food, oh, I'm full. After one meal of food, I can't take more. And you keep giving it this, well, I don't even like it anymore. I love pizza, but I'm having it every day. I don't even like it. So we have to keep making everything weirder. But your soul says, no, 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 no. It's not that I need more of the food. No, in fact, maybe I even need less a little bit. Give me a little bit less. Give it to me after 10 hours. Take it away from me for a while and then give it to me. I'll appreciate it more which was the experience of a lot of people. They're like, after 14 hours, I have one coffee and ooh, it takes me to the moon. So all of these, by the way, are, are lessons in self-knowledge. God in the, in the month of Ramazan is showing us in some, pay attention to these things. You learn a lot about yourself in this. So you learn that sometimes if you do something less, you enjoy it more. Isn't that interesting? And... Uh, and, and maybe you realize that the things that you thought you need for happiness, your happiness was in something else. And one of the people was telling me, I always thought in order to be happy, we have to have such a job, such a house. And then when I looked back at my year, I realized the happiest moment of my life was in the Shah Ramazan. We were invited to someone's house for suhoor. And they had such a small house and they didn't even have sofas. We were all sitting on the floor eating, but just talking next to my friends and talking about God and eating. He said that moment on the floor, eating very simple food next to my friend was the peak of my life the peak of my own joy and happiness that all days those days in i don't know hotels and on the best sofas in the world on the best cars not that they were bad though but they never reached this one in the level of just that free joy of the soul and i said hope this is a lesson for you you yourself are telling me you enjoy this so going forward make sure you live life in such a way that you get more of these experiences these are not limited to ramazan this shows you that you enjoy the company of your friends a lot and the friends who don't want you for your physical gains the friends that want you just because of the soul you are make that more see each other more make more time to to for your community for your friends or hello 
whatever it is that was your highlight i'm saying if you bring the lesson out of it you see that within it there's a lesson that you can benefit from going forward does that make sense so that was number one any spiritual highlight you had is a lesson in self-knowledge it's teaching you something about yourself it's teaching you what makes you happy what makes you high spiritually high and so taking going forward inshallah you take that with you now if we bring all of these spiritual highlights that everyone had one thing that would be uh, the one umbrella that everything what kind of umbrella is this <laughs> <laughs> umbrella would look like that no but i made an umbrella like this like you go inside of it there is one umbrella that all of these spiritual highlights the small one can be under that umbrella and that umbrella is this in son what kind of life is possible for you with god and he god says if we together you and god together if we live everything would be nicer I will give you strength. I will give you joy. I will even give you willpower. Honestly, did you think you could not eat for 14 hours? You just did it. Look how much potential is there within you. That's when we live together. God says, come live with me and I'll make your year so special. You can achieve so much. This is just small thing you achieved in 30 days. Look at you. Well done. Now let's see if we live together for the next 11 months, what kind of things we can achieve. You thought you caught my don't know, Salah, focus on something for half an hour, you went and read Abu Hamza Somali for hour and a half, Masala. Or you read Joshan Kabir. Look at you, you did it. Well done. The same energy you can bring it to the rest of your life, to the rest of your year. Together, you can achieve so much with God in all aspects of your life, in your relationships, in your, um, at your work, in your studies. God says, I just showed you life with me. Is that beautiful? Look at the people around you. Weren't they more beautiful than Ramazan? Well, if you bring God now to your family, the relationship between the husband and wife can be so much more beautiful. In the nights of God, honestly, how many people forgave? They were like, God, I want to be forgiven and I forgive everyone who hurt me. Well, God says, you know why people did that? Because I was in the air. When God is in the air, people forgive easily and they apologize easily. I myself as well apologized before the Knights of God. One of my biggest regrets was hurting anyone. So I apologized publicly. I said, anyone that I've hurt, I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Inshallah, God helps me heal so I don't hurt others. And may God, inshallah, give so much to the people that I have by mistake hurt so that they also get the courage to forgive me, inshallah. So God says, baby, when I'm in the air, look, everyone is just trying to become better. Hopefully, imagine the rest of the year, I'm not uh, on absent. I can come to your family, husband and wife, parents and children, siblings, sisters and brothers, brothers and brothers. When God comes among you, you hurt each other less. If one of you makes a mistake, you find it easier to go and apologize. The other one finds it easier to forgive. You know, in, in any aspect of our life will become more beautiful when God comes. And now the main point that I want to say is this, that after the month of Ramadan, it is true that the month finished, but the host is still with us. In other words, we went to the Shah Ramadan to become friends with God. And now that the Shah is gone, God is still there. What made the month special was God and God is now with us. Hala, we're going to experience Ramadan in 11 months. Yani, if you think about it, nothing has ended. That was just a practice. Now this is the real stuff. God says, I am here and I am as strong as I was in the month of Ramadan to support you, to help you in any aspect of your life. One of the um, beautiful thing about God that we should always bear in mind, and I feel like a lot of the times when we speak about the month of Ramadan, it seems like we're forgetting about this point. Prophet Ibrahim in the Quran is teaching us something so beautiful. Prophet Ibrahim initially uh, considered other things Allah, in his journey as his Lord, right? He was like, he looked at, for example, the sun. He was like, this sun is so special. MashaAllah gives us warmth. 
gives us so much light as and it's through the sun that plants grow and this sun we without it we can't live but then he saw that the sun sets when night happens at sunset the sun goes and sets and he was like now nah, i don't love a, a a a lord that sets sun disappeared i don't like that now nah, i thought you're my god but you're not my god hello i want to ask us if after the month of Ramazan, we think that now God is gone, خب, we're saying God sets, God disappears. Because many of us, I feel like we look at it this way. Oh, Ramazan went to... And I know part of it is because of the beauties in the Ramazan that we miss. That makes a lot of sense. But we should never think that God has set, God has disappeared. No, Prophet Ibrahim said, we believe in a God that will never set. That is always there, you know, not even uh, for one moment God will leave us. God is always there with us. And, and that is something that now we need to start integrating into our lives. Ramazan is not a moment we go meet God. No, Ramazan, God is always there. Ramazan, you just see how much you will feel God once you pay attention to God. God is always paying attention to us. In Ramazan, he creates an environment in which it helps us pay attention to him. Allah, he, he's done so many beautiful, you know, games and things to get us pay attention to him. But now, if you pay the same attention to him, now you'll find him everywhere. You'll find him even stronger now in the, in, in that the month of Ramazan is gone. And there are many ahadiths, by the way, that uh, talk about this as well. And uh, we have that the same number of people who manage to reach the level of istighfar in the month of Ramazan, the same number will be uh, forgiven on the day of Eid. Eh. The whole month, everyone forgiven, the same number will be forgiven on Eid. God says, yes. Maybe Ramazan was special because I was God there. Hope I'm the same God on the day of Eid. I'm the same God the day after Eid. I'm the same God the day after the day after Eid. I'm there. That's the lesson we need to have to learn. We, if we learn this lesson from Ramazan, that what made it special was living with God, our beautiful Lord, dig it, you're sorted. The rest of these 11 months, inshallah, you will have an amazing, different year. There are many people, the reason they have this spiritual high in Ramazan and afterwards it comes back to normal is that they went in Ramazan and they missed the lesson. They enjoyed the party. The party was over. They left. This is like going to someone's house. Someone says, come to my house. I, have, I want to invite you. There's food. It's like going to their house, having the food, enjoying what's there, the desserts, what not. And when you're in the house, like this is perfect. I'm eating the food. Everything is great. Then you go back home. <coughs> Then you go back home, you're like, hope the food is no longer there, the dessert is not there, or life is back to normal. Makes sense. But if when you went to that person's house, after you had the food, you sat next to that person, you talked to them a little bit, you got to know the host. What is life like it for you? What do you like? Can we be friends? If you learn to enjoy the company of the host, even when you leave their house, the host says, baby, by the way, I'm there for you. Huh? I'm one phone call away. Whenever you need help, I'll come. I'll do everything for you. That way, even when you leave the house, you may have lost the food, but you have gained the friend. So if we go to Ramazan, enjoy what's on offer and come out, hope afterwards we're like, we miss what was on offer. But if you go to the month of Ramazan, enjoy what's on offer, but also make a friend. Become friends with God. Even when Ramazan is over, now you have a friend. Life is not back to normal. And this is, I think, one of the things that if you think about now, it would really help you going forward. Um, there is this beautiful idea in psychology. <clears throat> we make a distinction between two types of memories. And, and this is not, you know, arbitrary. Even... Uh, studies of the brain show that the way these two memories are stored are different one type of memory is the memory that <clears throat> we call it episodic memory these are the memories that happens in your own life مثلا, 
Last night I had, for example, let's say I'm making it up, but I had but then John Malfouf. I had, for example, aubergine. Another person says, yes, in the morning I had a coffee. Things that happened to me, episodic memory of what happened to me. This is episodic memory. We have another type of memory which is not for things that happen to me. These are the facts that people have told me about life. So you go to school and the teacher says, yes, there's a country you haven't seen on the other side of the world. Its name is, for example, this. Or there are these chemicals in the world. So two types of memory. One is something that is your own life. This happened to me. That happened to me. I don't know. I saw my mom. Then my mom مثلاً, gave me a kleche. Then I saw my dad. My dad took the kleche that my mom had given me away. Or whatever <laughs> episodic memory. <laughs> then you have another type of memory, which are just facts. There's that country around the world. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that's the politician. That's the capital city. That's this. Just things you have heard about the world. Now, why am I talking about this? I'm saying for a lot of us, God belongs to the category of facts. There is a God. People have told us. There is a God. Um, I don't know. It seems like he's kind. Uh, he hears people. He's Sami. He is Basir. Um, this God, they say he, he's everywhere. It, these were just facts detached from our life. What the month of Ramadan does for many people is that it takes God from this fact category of your memory to your episodic memory. What do I mean? It's no longer that, yes, there is a God who is kind and is there for people. Nah, you say, Two weeks ago, I sat down on my prayer mat and I talked to God and he was there with me. And he got from being a cold fact in that is detached from your life, suddenly becomes a part of your life. He says, yes, I was sitting watching this lecture and the lecturer told me God loves me and I felt it. Past God is not just something I've been told about. God is something that I found in the episodes of my life. There was that moment in episode مثلاً, of مثلاً, that I felt God in my heart. Or there was that memory I have. I was very sad. I was very worried. I went and on the night of Qadr, I really cried and I talked to my God and he and my heart felt safe. What I ask for something I found. Dige God is no longer a category of fat, cold, but part of my life. The moment you have an episodic memory with God, that you yourself in some moment of your own beautiful life have tasted what a life with God looks like, Dige, you're sorted for the rest of your life. Now, Allah, in Quranic terms, in your own life, you have found light. You know how it says, Allah God is the wali, the caretaker of the people who have faith, takes them from darkness towards light. This light, this finding God in a moment of your life, that's a light. And now just watch slowly, slowly, this light will become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And to the extent that the gate will take up your whole life. And so that's why it's very important to cherish these moments. Okay, oh my God, that night I felt God, God became part of my own life. God was no longer things others have told me. I, I tasted God in my life. And if you cherish this, you realize hope the same God can come to the next moment as well. To the next moment as well. In that moment when you're scared. In that moment when you feel lonely. In that moment when you feel you're about to fall into a temptation. In that moment when you're unhappy about yourself. In all of these moments, God can come and bring that light. And your life will really change if you allow that to happen. And slowly, slowly you will see that you enjoy it yourself so much that you keep inviting God back. And you say, God, I'm scared, help me with that. I'll, you know, or God, I'm, I'm this, help me with that. God, I'm really unhappy about myself, help me with this. And suddenly you see, oh my God, I said, I cannot, I can't live without God. God has, God is my whole life. I wake up with God. I wake up saying, God, in this day, 
have my back. I wake up smiling at God. I go to sleep at night talking to God. God, tomorrow this thing may happen. I'm worried. Help me, God. Uh, you know, as then you realize slowly, slowly your whole life becomes this beautiful relationship with God. And, uh, and God is no longer something other people tell you about. God is every moment of your life. And he says, And one thing I would like to also say is that don't think this life is exclusive to a certain group of people. No, this is a human right. Any insan can have such a relationship with God. No one is deprived of, of, of a life like this with God. And so I hope, inshallah, if you manage to learn this lesson, take it forward, you will realize that Ramazan was not the end. Ramazan was only the beginning. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this session.